Hi everyone, let's have a look at my low time frame and micro bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the low time frame bullish scenario where we are looking at a three wave structure in an ABC where the most common target for wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236, taken from the low to the high of A to the current low of wave B. However, this can still be a three wave structure like this as well, where then wave B is going to find support at the target box that we already have on the chart for a while now, which is between 25.6k and 25. 9k with the 786 a daily naked point of control and also a daily level and you will see that if price is going to move towards the downside towards the blue target box that the target area for wave c is going to be moving to the downside as well and if price is going to end somewhere around this target area that you will see that the most common target area for wave c is now including this blue resistance area over here the resistance box between 28k and 28.1k so if price is going to do something like this then this is an interesting resistance area to at least keep your eyes on in this particular scenario the invalidation is if price is going to push further towards the downside and takes this low if we then go to the low time frame bearish scenario then we over here have a three wave structure in an abc where this wave c is very extended far beyond the 2.618 which already is a rare target for a wave c so this is very very long for a wave c and then followed by potentially an abc again a three wave structure towards the downside in this particular scenario now the question is if this move to the downside is a five wave move or a three wave move because of all the overlap and in order to figure that out you have to go to maybe the three minute or the five minute time frame Frames, which are time frames that I usually don't visit. However, it doesn't really matter for potentially this in an ABC scenario. It does matter if it is a more bearish scenario in a wave one, two, and then a bigger three to the downside, but more about that in a little bit. So in this scenario, we expect this to be a three wave structure, followed then by another three wave structure for then potentially a continuation to the upside and then creating a move like this. Now in the most bearish scenario, we are looking at potentially this to be a wave one, two, three, four, five wave structure, which is not preferred, but it is something we have to keep in mind. Then this scenario is a wave two, which is very sharp. So then this has to be an ABC. And as mentioned, this wave C is very, very extended, which is very rare. And then this is another wave one, then a two and a bigger three towards the downside. Now, in my opinion, this is very alternative, definitely not preferred. Another scenario I have on my chart, but it is one that I at least like to mention. And in this bearish scenario, I do have to say that the low over here can be taken in then a three three five wave move which is an expanding flat so if this low is taken it doesn't mean we're going to tank all the way to the downside we also have the yellow target box over here yellow support strong support between 24.8k and 24.3k for then potentially a bounce towards the upside but first we have to wait and see that if price is going to move down what it is going to do in this area over here because this is also still an interesting area for the bullish scenario and then a reversal towards the upside if we then look at the micro scenario over here, potentially looking at a WXY. So in this scenario, we then have a three wave structure in a W followed by a three wave structure in a wave X. And then we're looking for a three wave structure to the downside in a wave Y. Now in this particular scenario, if we look at wave X, what is interesting is we started with some sort of a five three five wave structure and then an a then we had a w x y in a b followed then by a c wave i explained this in more detail in one of my previous videos where this wave c had perfect resistance inside the most common target area for wave c between the one and the one dot two three six taken from the low to the high of a to the low of b and as you can see very very nicely respected for then a three wave structure towards the downside over here now this can then be the first structure in then a wave A or W, followed then by a second structure and eventually a third structure to the upside, which might already be finished. Because if we're looking at a potential 3-3-3 three, three, three scenario, then the minimum target is the 0 0.618 and the maximum target for the most common target area is the 1.236 and then an indoor like WXY scenario basically. So the 0 0.618 has been hit very nicely respected. Price is now moving towards the downside. So the high of this wave X might already be in for now potentially a wave Y towards the downside. And if this is going to be a wave Y, you do want to see a three wave structure to the downside and not a straight line to the downside. If it is going to be a straight line, it might be more bearish and we might be actually going for these lows. Another like option in this scenario is that potentially wave X finished over here already. And this is then the first structure, second structure, 
And now this is the final structure for potentially then this wave Y. But in both scenarios, it is going to be very, very interesting what happens if price is going to take this low of W and also how it's going to react at these lows. Because if price is going to move to the downside towards these lows and what we're going to get is a bit of a bounce. So imagine this happens, moves to the downside in whatever structure, either a three or a straight line, doesn't really matter. But if price is going to potentially touch the blue target box over here, it might bounce to the upside and then depending on what you have with your strategy you can look for potential long setups right now you always need a, a plan a strategy you need entry requirements maybe that's a change of market structure where you then enter if market structure is changing maybe maybe you're waiting for a bounce to the upside then a retracement and some bullish cvd divergences or rsi or stochastic whatever it is that you use and that then gives you confidence for a potential long setup because on this channel we don't fomo we don't yolo and and we also do not catch knives and catching a knife is basically meaning that if price is going to dump to the downside you're just entering long just because there is some support that's not recommended i'm not a financial advisor so you do you if that fits your strategy because you maybe have order flow or all that stuff that's of course fine that's very advanced as well so that's perfectly good um, but i would always recommend to have some proof of support before potentially entering a um, like potential long scenario over here now another option is that now we have a double top over here so for a potential wave wave x where is it this one over here yes this can be the high of potentially wave x but if it moves towards the upside there is still a target area towards the upside here as well as you can see for potentially a resistance which is between 26.9k and 27.1k so if price would potentially turn around move to the upside take the double top that we now have over here move into this potential uh, resistance area it can still do something like this as well right so yeah we have to wait and see how this happens but these are the scenarios that i look for and of course we know our resistance we know our support and if price is going to move to the downside we still have potentially the bullish scenario coming into play but wait for some proof of support in my opinion not for financial advice of course and in the bearish scenario yeah we can still find support and move up even in a bearish scenario but we can also still take these lows so we have to wait and see what the weekend is gonna bring in the micro bullish scenario this move to the upside is a wave A or wave 1, then wave 2 or B is already finished, and then this has to be some sort of a wave 1, 2, and then we're looking for a bigger move towards the upside, where if we're going to go into a wave 3, you want to see price moving up impulsively, as well as volume moving up impulsively. Now at the moment as it stands, price is moving to the downside, we see a big of a high volume candle at the lows as well, that's of course not really what you want to see, but it's not invalidated. It's invalidated if this low is taken. Gotta say, it is quite difficult to count a nice 5 wave strike structure in this wave one it looks much much better as a three wave structure and therefore potentially a bit more downside either like this or directly might be preferred for then a bounce in this support area and then a move towards the upside so yeah basically what i'm saying is on a micro scenario probably my preferred scenario is this one over here where we are still looking for a bit more downside towards this area and on the low time frame scenario this is then my more preferred scenario where this is then an a b and eventually for higher prices uh, upwards for a wave c the weekend is coming up which tends to be rangy as well so of course we have to wait and see what the weekend is going to do now, if we look at the CVD divergences, we have both bullish and bearish divergences in play. So currently, the first one, the first divergence basically that started on the chart was the bullish divergence over here. And that's the reason why I mentioned this target box at the highs for maybe move up and then down. Because then the bullish divergence, the green line, is going to play out because we have a higher low on price but we have a lower low on the cvd which i will show you in a second and the target of this bullish divergence is the high over here it's the green line and as you can see we got close but we didn't take the high so the bullish divergence hasn't yet played out and what is important is that the bullish divergence was the first visible divergence of the ones that you see over here so after this bullish divergence was created then we started to create this more local bearish divergence lower high on price higher high on the cvd which i'll show in a second as well and also the bigger bearish divergence so what i think could be quite interesting in my opinion is if price is going to first move towards the upside take the double top find resistance 
and therefore also invalidate this more local bearish CVD divergence. And then the bigger potential uh, bearish CVD divergence comes into play with if price is going to make a lower high somewhere here, we then have bearish divergences still most likely. And then the target of these bearish divergences is going to be this low over here for then something like this, this, and then a move up. So all the divergences basically playing out. If we go then to the CVD chart, I didn't take a snippet this time. If we go to the CVD chart, you will also see what I mean. So the first divergence basically we saw is over here, higher low in price, but on the blue line, lower low on the CVD, lower low on CVD, higher low in price, bullish divergence, target is this high. But then as price started to evolve towards the upside, that is we, when we also saw more local bearish divergences over here, so a lower high on price, but you can see on the yellow line a higher high on the CVD, so there's bearish divergence. However, based on experience and also statistics, the highest probability is the bullish CVD divergences because that one exists first. Like first we had the bullish one and then the bearish one. So the highest probability goes to the bullish one in this scenario and it's always probability. It's not 100% but it's a probabilities game. And what we then also see on the yellow line is that with this high over here, we actually now also have bigger bearish CVD divergences between the high over here and the lower high on price. But on the yellow line with the CVD that's made on this candle, you can actually see if you look to the right on my horizontal cursor line that the yellow line is above my cursor, which means lower high on price, higher high on the CVD. But what I then would like to see is potentially price moving up, taking the highs, and then the bullish CVD played out, and then we have the bigger bearish one remaining for them potentially that move towards the downside where this area is gonna be interesting. So yeah, it's gonna be a very, very interesting weekend in my opinion. So I hope that this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use, which is the CVD, as you just saw. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.